Embryogenesis is the process of building the human body from a single cell. I think it's one of the most incredible things that exists on Earth from a single embryo. So how does this process work? Yeah, it is It is an incredible process. Uh, I think it's maybe the most uh, magical process there is. And uh, I think one of the most fundamentally interesting things about it is that it shows that each of us takes the journey from so-called just physics to mind, right? Because we all start life as a single uh, quiescent unfertilized oocyte, and it's basically a bag of chemicals. And you look at that and you say, okay, this is chemistry and physics. And then nine months and some years later, you have an organism with high level cognition and preferences and um, an inner life and so on. And what embryogenesis tells us is that that transformation from physics to mind is gradual. It's smooth. There is no uh, special place where you know a lightning bolt says, boom, now you've gone from, from physics to true cognition. That doesn't happen. And so we can see in this process that the whole mystery, you know, the biggest mystery of the, of the universe, basically, how you get mind from matter. From just physics, in quotes. Yeah. So where's the magic into the thing? How do we get from information coded in DNA and make physical reality out of that information? So one of the things that I think is really important if we're going to bring in um, DNA into this picture is to think about the fact that what DNA encodes is the hardware of life. DNA contains the instructions for the kind of micro level hardware that every cell gets to play with. So all the proteins, all the signaling factors, the ion channels, all the cool little pieces of hardware that cells have, that's what's in the DNA. The rest of it is in uh, so-called generic laws. And these are laws of mathematics. These are laws of computation. These are laws of um, of, of physics, of all, all, all kinds of interesting things that are not directly in the DNA. And that that process you know i think i think the reason I, the reason i always put um just physics in quotes is because i don't think there is such a thing as just physics i think that thinking about these things in binary categories like this is physics this is true cognition this is as if it's only faking although these kinds of things i think that's what gets us in trouble i think that we really have to understand that it's a continuum and we have to work up the scaling the laws of scaling and we can we can certainly talk about that there's a lot of really interesting uh, thoughts to be had there so the physics is deeply integrated with the uh, information. So the DNA doesn't exist on its own. The DNA is uh, integrated as in, in some sense in response to the, the, the laws of physics at, at every scale, the laws of the environment it exists in. Yeah, the environment and also the laws of the universe. I mean, the thing about the, thing about the, uh, the DNA is that it's... Um, once evolution discovers a certain kind of machine that if if the if the physical implementation is appropriate it's sort of uh and this is hard to talk, uh, talk about because we don't have a good vocabulary for this yet but it's a very um kind of a platonic notion that that if the machine is there it pulls down interesting uh, interesting things that you do not have to evolve from scratch because the laws of physics give it to you for free. So just as a, as a really stupid example, if you're trying to evolve a particular triangle, you can evolve the first angle and you evolve the second angle, but you don't need to evolve the third. You know what it is already. Now, why do you know? That's, that's a gift for free from geometry in a particular space. You know what that angle has to be. And if you evolve an ion channel, which is ion channels are basically transistors, right? They're voltage-gated current conductances. If you evolve that ion channel, you immediately get to use things like truth tables. You get logic functions. You don't have to evolve the logic function. You don't have to evolve a truth table. It doesn't have to be in the DNA. It's You get it for free, right? And the fact that if you have NAND gates, you can build anything you want, you get that for free. All you have to evolve is that that first step, that first little machine that that, that enables you to couple to those laws. And there's laws of adhesion and, and, and many other things. And this is all um, that interplay between the, the, the hardware that's set up by the genetics and the software that's based, right? The physiological software that basically does all the computation and the cognition and everything else is a real interplay between the information and the DNA and the laws of, of physics of computation and so on.